uh, try to attack this Christmas story a different way on today, but I want to pick it up from the book of Psalms. I just want to be a little bit different relative to this Christmas story. Thank you, Safari, for an awesome job that you did this morning. Go to Psalms 13, if you don't mind. You can remain being seated. God bless you. Thank you. I know we normally stand in honor of the word. Um, in Psalms 13, it reads thusly, ladies and gentlemen, how long will thou forgive me, O Lord? Forever. How long will thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemies be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O oh Lord. Yeah, yeah. My God, light my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Least my enemies say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I trust it. In thy mercy, my heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Now, I want to just tag this text today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, I don't look like what I'm going through. I really don't look like what I'm going through. In, in, in a time Thank you, Usher. You may be seated anytime I announce the text twice. It's always correct for the ushers of the church to, to be seated. Amen. 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 Glad to see all these books home from school. Amen. 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 Let, let me uh, Y'all did that. deal with this particular text. Anytime, ladies and gentlemen, um, you, you have uh, a word that has ology on the end of it. it. It always, it always means a study of something. When you see anthropology, you think of the study of human culture. When you see archaeology, it is a study of the human material remains. Anytime you yeah, astrology is the study of the influence of stars. All right, all right. And then there's bacteriology, it's the study of bacteria. When right. yeah, yeah. you see biology, it is the study of life. Right. Uh, cardiology is the study of the heart. Right. And Christology, uh, climatology is the study of the climate. Uh, dermatology is the study of the skin disorder. Numerology is the study of the Holy Spirit. And neurology is the study of the nerve system. And theology is the study of God. But when you get to Christology, it is the study of Christ itself. And that's what this season is all about. It is the study of Christ. Uh, the this, Psalms this this comes along and, and shares with us uh, about how long, Lord, are you going to, to forget about me? And, and before I deal with that, the, the question that jumps out at you on the outset um, of the reading of the Psalms is how is it that the Psalm book qualifies for what theologians call the biblical canon? And canon, canon in theology is defined as a general law, it's a, it's a rule, a principle, a criteria by which something is judged or a collection or a list of sacred books accepted as being genuine. Right. 
the, the, the answer reverberates to, to us through history that when we read the 150 Psalms of praise, we cannot help but observe that there is a clear and definite regard for Jesus Christ who had not shown up at this time. All right, all right, all right. And there are some songs that are specifically messianic. And they speak to saluting and celebration and adoration and salutation and the praise of Christ who had not even stepped into eternity yet. Who had not even came into his time. But, but it is through some of these writers that we believe that he is already here. Uh, that they, they, they write with resolution that we have not seen him, and more than likely we will not live to see him. But we already believe about one thing that he is coming. Simply because it is the word of God. So, so Psalms qualifies for the biblical account not just because it's valued to saints of God, but it's Christology that it points directly to Jesus Christ. It, it, it points to the admiration of the soon coming king and and there's another reason why it qualifies for the biblical canon because most of the biblical historians believe in and concert that the book of Psalms explores full spectrum of human emotions. Every human emotion that we can feel and, and is known to feel, have known to have felt, have been addressed uh, directly in the book of Psalms. And that's why you should make this part of your daily and personal devotion. Because eventually you will read something in the book of Psalms that expresses or addresses every aspect of what you go through every day. One of the things about dealing with Psalms uh, that ties into this season uh, I was just noticing something on news this morning. Uh, we will spend $80 billion just on Christmas. But we get happy and we're overjoyed about the 25th of December. But at the end of the day, the question comes to us this morning. Nobody knows what you've been through all the way up to the 24th. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Uh, the 24th of this month. And, and you will enjoy one day and go back to the 26th and have the same trouble that you had before the 25th. Stay, stay with me here. I hear you. I got you this morning. I'm your friend. I'm your brother. Guess what? I come to tell you. You've been around here singing Hark the Herald the Angels Sing. You've been singing Joy to the World. The Lord is coming. I, I hear you singing Oh come all ye faithful. Oh little town of Bethlehem. You've been singing Silent Night, Holy Night, uh, the, the, the first Noel, We Three Kings of Warrant of Heart. I mean, you got all the Christmas songs together, but at the same time, in singing your Christmas songs, you still have your own blues song. Let me park here. I can tell y'all gonna be dull this morning. You got a blues song like the thrill is gone. Call it Stormy Monday. Lord Hammers. You got a blues song like Dust My Broom. Down in the hole. I, I can tell y'all some young city stickers in here. 
But but every now and then you got a blues song that go with your troubles. Ah, uh, Psalms 13 comes along. And it deals with human emotions of despair. The, the, the writer is saying, I'm despondent. I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm, I, I'm not saying nothing. I'm not talking. I'm silent. But I got some frustrations on the inside. He says, my, my, my clothing attire during the Christmas time don't represent what I'm dealing with. He says, my, the, my Christmas tree with the ornaments and the lights on it does not represent everything that I've been through all year long. I got some babies in here if y'all don't act funny this morning. Boy, you been through some stuff. You really didn't know you was going to make it to be something. Matter of fact, your story is... I'm not just frustrated with the world, but guess what? There have been some days I've been frustrated with God because God didn't show up when I needed him to. I know this ain't your message, but this is what I want to preach. Come on, take your seatbelt off. Let's go to church. I want to talk to the folk that's frustrated before this coming Wednesday. That's the group I need in here this morning. I need to talk to the folk that had some hard time between January the 1st and all the way up until today and didn't know you could make it this way. I need to talk to somebody that's been through a divorce, that's been through a separation, lost a job, ain't got enough money to pay your bills, your friends are few. I need to talk. Y'all should have went to bed last night. I need to talk to them folks. They, 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 don't, they, they don't know what you're going through. I, got, I know you look cute this morning. I, I know you got your hair flipped to the left, flipped to the right. I know you got on your Christmas shoes. But guess what? None of that represents what you've been through. He says, he says, guess what? I'm not just frustrated. With the world, but I've been a Christian. I'm frustrated with God. And let me let me just break my hand with you this morning. Don't sit here and act like you can't have it. There are some days in your life you you, you don't see what God is doing. Man, I, I need to find the wrong side of the Let me find somebody to see like God ain't moving fast. Man. If you, if, you, if you just can put some batteries in and make it move a little bit fast, you'll be all right. And church folk will not admit that we, we have had some seasons in our life when you've just been frustrated with God. I know, that, I know you want me to talk about Mary and Elizabeth, but that ain't what I want to talk about. We 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 supposed to come to church then and say he good. Matter of fact, y'all got it down to the time. He good. He's good all the time. All the time. Look at you. See you. See you got it. All the time. The Lord is good. You even refer to it again. The Lord is good all the time. The Lord is good. And then and then the main folk that said all the time. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. And you struggle with how to pay the bill on Monday morning. We, we, we're supposed to have some good testimonies about God. You, and your spirituality really is ineffective if it does not address your reality. Uh, and and I, I, I'm 
I'm tired of church for being false. A lot of you babies, uh, your whole year you've been flodging. Uh, let, let me help you with something. You ain't all that. And then something. You, you got some trouble going on in your life. The, the, the Bible is more than real than most of us. And those who wrote in the scripture exposed and disclosed their frustration but with the God that they really love. The, the God that saved them, the God that called them, the God that made them. And, and, and you have not walked with God until you have a sense in your life that you've been frustrated with God. You didn't walk with God until uh, you've been frustrated. And, and God is good all the time. Yes, God is good all the time. But, 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 but all the time does not feel good. Even though he's good, what I'm going don't always feel good. Come, come, come on, people in Russia. How many of you ever had some days? What you deal with, don't feel like you ought to be going through this. Yeah, I, know, I know what you're going to tell me. I'm at the church today, but I'm, 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 I'm a little bit mad. I'm a little upset because I got some things going on in my life that I can't talk about. I, I try to dress like I'm holy. And I, Look like I'm holy, but I'm really messed up. I just, well, I gotta get some real for it. I'm really messed up this morning, man. Matter of fact, if you ain't careful, you can break out and start crying. When you start thinking about some stuff you had to deal with, this year, matter of fact, if, if, if you weren't so had so much pride, you would break out and start building up in your pride. Yeah. Yeah. I've I, I been seeking God for some stuff. Yeah. And seeing that God had done nothing. Yeah. And, and, and if we don't hurry up, yeah. I'm going to take back. I wish you God would sit on that front seat and say amen. I'm at home today. Come on, talk to me. I'm going to tell you Let me let, let me find somebody here ever just to ask in your own hand and then you made it worse. Oh, y'all arrived now. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. What good is your faith? If it doesn't help you, what's your reality? Uh, God's not going to bless you with money when, when you, you hadn't been disciplined with the little money you got. Uh, that, that's for another day's sermon. Uh, a lot of you Christians are not disciplined with the blessings that you have. And the reason why God can't do more for you because you don't have, you, he bless you with a car you won't watch. Uh, and you sit there and tell me, I don't understand why I can't get enough money to, to get me enough. You won't watch the one you got. You, you, you live in an apartment and I don't understand why God won't give me a house, you, you don't want to pay the pot in no old time. You, you, you want another job, but you got to handle the one you got right now. You got to learn how to be thankful for some little stuff before God can bless you with some greater stuff. I wish I had anybody in here to learn how to be thankful for some small things before God can give it some big things. Stop your mumbling. Stop your grumbling. Stop your complaining and learn how to be grateful. Grand all so they can go home, I am too.
I'm going to enjoy Christmas here. Thank you. See, God is not going to give you the world when you have not been faithful. All right? Over the few things that you have. So, so if by chance you don't get what you want for Christmas, if by chance, then, then you handle the stuff that you got last year. Right? Were you grateful? Or did you think somebody's supposed to? See, we ain't got to do anything funny. Learn how to tell our folks. Y'all took me to this church. I I'm going to the mound and get some real folk in here. Come on, talk to me. Learn how to be thankful for small stuff. Watch this. Ain't nobody got to know your name. There, there are some natural disciplines we need to walk in before we can walk around talk about what God going to do in the next seven days. And then let's, let's, let's visit today a testimony of a man out of God's own heart. One who God has specifically and intentionally anointed to be Israel's first godless selected king. You got to remember he was a skilled fighter, a skilled musician. Yeah. And he had the anointing all over him. Yeah. And, and, and David finds himself in a spot in his life where he look, it looks like God had abandoned him. And, 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 and look what he writes. And let me just deal with the tale of the text here. How long will you forget? Oh Lord, did he ask the question forever? How long are you going to just hide your face from me? Hey, look, 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 look at his resume, he says, I played skillfully. Matter of fact, I was so skillful until I, 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 play, I played the hell out of song. I'm in the book. Come on, time. He said, Saul had nothing but the devil in him. But, but, but my music made him become so stupid. Look at his resume. He said, I stood before Goliath with five spoon stones and a slingshot. And while the enemy was trying to give me some other weapons, but, but I used what you gave me. I took the enemy down and, and brought a victory for the people. And ladies and gentlemen, I must tell you this morning, learn how to use what God gives you. Rather than worry about what you don't have, learn how to use what you already have. He said, how long, Lord, are you going to neglect me? I'm in the text. I have experienced uh, parental uh, neglect because my, my dad didn't even believe in my anointing. It, it, it took another prophet to come to our house to bring me out in the pasture and put me in the, the forefront. How long are you going to neglect? 